Welcome to What the F is Going On in Latin America and the Caribbean, Code Pink's weekly YouTube program of hot news out of the region. In partnership with Friends of Latin America, Massachusetts Peace Action, and Task Force on the Americas, we broadcast every Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. Pacific, 7.30 p.m. Eastern on Code Pink YouTube Live. Today's episode is The End of the Reign, Barbados Becomes a Republic. In an overnight ceremony in the capital, Bridgetown, Dame Sandra Mason was sworn in as president. The new era for Barbados ends Britain's centuries of influence, including more than 200 years when the island was a hub for the transatlantic tra slave trade. Dame Mason, 72, the island's governor general since 2018, was named as president-elect of the nation following a vote in parliament last month. She now replaces the Queen of England as the head of state. Barbados announced its plan to become a republic last year, but will remain within the Commonwealth. It was one of England's first slave colonies. English, English settlers first occupied the island in 1627, and under British control, it became a sugar plantation economy using enslaved people brought in from Africa. Slavery was abolished in Barbados in 1834, and the country became fully independent in 1966. With a population of about 285,000 people, Barbados is one of the more populous and prosperous Caribbean islands. Joining us today to celebrate the newly created Republic of Barbados is David Denny. He is the General Secretary of the Caribbean Movement for Peace and Integration, President of the Cuban Barbadian Friendship Association, and General Secretary of Friends of Venezuela Solidarity Committee Barbados. Welcome, David. I'm so pleased you had time to talk with us today. I'm happy to be here with you. It's so great. I, I have to let our audience know that David and I, our activism has, has intersected several times in Caracas. So um, I can attest to you, he truly does do Venezuela solidarity work. And um, yeah. we're so happy you had right. time today. It's a <laughs> well, your work is so great. Your activism is so strong and your work is, is so great. We're just, we're so thankful to, um, to have you with us today. Um, so you're talking to us from Barbados this morning? Yeah, I'm talking to you from Barbados in my home. So tell us what, why don't we just start with um, what the activity is like on the ground. The, the entire island must be celebrating since early this morning, I'm sure. Well, the celebration started from yesterday. The people of Barbados are very happy to know that we were able to remove the Queen of Head of State of Barbados. And we are a nation now with full independence, we are a republic, and we are very happy to be able to move forward as a nation where we are cutting ourselves away from the royal family, because you know this family played a major role in slavery and benefited a, and benefited a lot from slavery. So we have you know, we have taken a position to cut ourselves away from that monarchy, even though we remain as part of the Commonwealth, which I think is important for us because it's a very good intergovernmental agency. But we are a nation by ourselves today. And the people of Barbados, um, they had a very big celebration last night. And, and today we have more celebration. You know, so the people of Barbados are going to spend the entire week celebrating its new republic. So, you know, here I am in Tegucigalpa, Honduras, talking to you in Barbados. And of course, we had a witness a significant win um, for the people of Honduras on Sunday. So it's really wonderful to see. Now, two days later, um, Barbados become a full republic. There's a lot happening in Latin America and the Caribbean. That's very exciting and liberating uh, for people. What, um, how do you see uh, the new Republic of Barbados influencing and affecting um, economic and foreign policy throughout, throughout the hemisphere of the Americas, specifically the Caribbean, the Caribbean but but it will definitely influence the hemisphere as well, I suspect. Well, I think what would happen from here, 
could be that some of our Caribbean English speaking countries in the region will now move towards becoming a republic. And we expect countries like St. Lucia and Jamaica to become republics soon. Um, economically, I think that it will help us in a major way because Barbados need to now look at South-South trading and business relationship rather than concentrating only on North America and Britain. I think we need to concentrate now on South-South trading. Um, Barbados have just set up a number of embassies in Africa, which I think is good. And with a left and progressive movement developing in Latin America, I think this will also help to create the conditions for us to be able to defend our region and for us to be able to work together economically and politically. Because there's, there's a lot that Barbados as a small nation can develop with in the Latin America region. And we have never really, we have never really, you know, um, look at Latin America as a important economic zone because we were tied to Britain and to the Queen and economically we spend all of our energy concentrating on 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 Britain for our own economic development. I think Latin America have hundreds of millions of African descendants and we need to zero in okay um and, and, and we need to zero in those areas because Barbados is just a hundred and maybe two hundred and fifty thousand people and therefore there's hundreds of millions of people you know of african descent that's living in in latin america we don't have any relationship or kind of in any form of contact with them i think if we can develop that we can create the conditions for us to, to, to develop a stronger relationship in terms of trade with Latin America and the Caribbean region. That's really, ex that's really exciting and so important for the, the history of the region, particularly the last 500 years. Um, I wonder, let's spend a little bit of time talking about, you mentioned um, economic zone and South to South trade. This is a really big theme and you and I have done um, Venezuela solidarity work for many, many years. And so um, we can share with our audience that this South to South trade was a vision of Hugo Chavez when he was alive and president of Venezuela. Um, let's talk a little bit about that, particularly in relationship to what came out of the SELAC summit in September in Mexico City, because a big theme of SELAC this year well, as um, and of course, this was the reconvening of CELAC after a four year pause. A big theme that came up in CELAC was the creation of an economic block, an economic block in the hemisphere, particularly the southern part of the hemisphere. And so let's talk a little bit about what, what that could possibly look like for Barbados and many other countries in the hemisphere as well. Well, I think it will help us to develop you know what I mentioned earlier in terms of so so trading, but we have a lot of experience coming out of the project that President Chavez launched between the Caribbean and Venezuela, the, the whole Pecha Caribbean agreement. And that agreement created the conditions for many Eastern Caribbean countries to get fuel at a reduced cost. One and to also get financial assistance or social development projects within the Eastern Caribbean, because under the Petro Caribbean Agreement, the contributing countries also benefited from a fund 
So, you know, those countries that would have paid for the fuel, that money created a fund that was coordinated and organized by President Chavez in Venezuela. And then countries then were able to draw down from that fund for social development, for sports and cultural development within our hemisphere. So we have a, we have we have a history in terms of working together. And I think this new idea can be developed in a, a broader platform in the Americas. Um, you know, and, and I think that that platform would be able to give progressive governments in the region an opportunity to work together so that we can save our region from this main crisis because the, 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 the COVID-19 situation is creating in our region serious economic problems among the poor and working class people. So we can develop an alternative if we work together within our region and if we use our resources for our people, I am certain that we can get out of this crisis situation. So I think that we need that kind of developmental program and project, you know, that is coming from CELAC. We need that kind of developmental program for our people so that we can save them from this crisis situation that is developing in our region. You know, this is one of the things, this is a theme that continually comes up through through many episodes of, of our weekly program is this, uh, and you're touching on it, this clash throughout the world, but we're specific, we can really see it here in the hemisphere of the Americas, this clash between those systems, those government and economic systems that are pushing the neoliberal project, the complete privatization of society and, and the economy, and then those governments and economic systems that are putting people over profits, where there is public investment in, in infrastructure and schools, and healthcare, and um, public institutions is this clash. And we're really seeing it play out. I would argue that perhaps it's been toppled slightly here in Honduras on Sunday. And now, of course, with the uh, Barbados today, a real opportunity to, to further strengthen relationships with other progressive governments in the hemisphere and throughout the global south. But that clash is really, really becoming very, very evident and stronger and stronger every day. And, um, and it's really wonderful to, to see um, a new republic form today. It's quite, it's quite exciting. And the message that it's sending you know, throughout the hemisphere. Let's talk, you brought up you know, a res the response to COVID-19 and, and um, I agree with you, the hemisphere as a whole has not had an opportunity to really strongly and appropriately respond. And of course there was a real opportunity for the United States to lead in the response to COVID and completely failed, not, not just in the hemisphere, but, it, but it, among my own people in the States as well. Let's talk about what a post COVID um, Caribbean and Latin America could look like. Well, looking from, uh, but looking at our position in Barbados where you live, I will say to you that workers are being attacked daily and the private sector is using COVID-19 conditions to exploit working class people, even reduce costs for labor. Um, because a lot of workers are losing their jobs and the economic situation among working class people, you know, are becoming very, very, very difficult for working class people to survive during this period. And I know that many of the other Caribbean countries are going through similar problems like what we are going through here in Barbados. So that the trade union movement 
and civil society must come together so as to defend working class people against these brutal capitalist forces that are exploiting our people. We have many problems also in relation to education because our educational system is now being done through using social media platforms and not face to face. So we haven't returned back to school for the, for the entire year of oh, 2021. Wow. So you would, wow. so, so you know that many poor working class people that do not have the social media platforms or equipment or electricity are going through serious problems because those children are not attending school on the social media network. So that's a very serious problem for poor working class people in Barbados and many other Caribbean countries that are going through this crisis situation or period. Well, it's creating, um you know, two definitive classes of people, correct? One that's uneducated and, and unemployable or un, and, uh, employable at a very, you know, yeah. modest salary. Yeah. And, you know, I, I will share with you, um, I, I was in Nicaragua earlier this month to observe the presidential elections there. And one of the things, I was also in Nicaragua in March of this year for a um, anti-sanctions theme delegation. And one of the things that was it's controversial outside of Nicaragua, but inside Nicaragua, it's been hugely successful and it directly ties with your comment about lack of education. The government in Nicaragua kept the public schools open throughout COVID. And the reason they did, and the children attended school half a day instead of a full day. So you'd go maybe half a day in the morning or half a day in the afternoon to keep the occupation limits down in the classroom. But the government was, insistent that those children who only had access to public education, whose families could not afford the, the privatized system, that those children would remain in school so as not to fall behind, which is what you're describing. And, um, and, not, and so that they would not fall behind for very similar reasons as we're discussing now, is that you're creating a permanent underclass by denying people the right to education, access to it in, in whatever form it takes. Yeah, that's really, um, that's, it's really crucial. And, uh, and if not everybody has electricity and laptops and access to the internet, but if you can still keep the public schools open in some fashion, you can help, um, help alleviate that, that social economic divide. That yeah. is really, we're seeing that in the United States too. That, you know, that divide between people who have access to the online education and those and those who don't. It's creating a permanent underclass, I would argue, or attempting to create a permanent underclass. That's maybe a better way to phrase it. What has been the, um, how, how do I say this without sounding, um, what has been the effect of COVID-19 in Barbados, has it been, and I'm, has it been, you know, a pretty dramatic health scare, or, or what? Has, how's the management been of the well, pandemic there? Well, we have serious problems with the COVID nineteen situation, um, to the extent that all of our centers, COVID nineteen centers, are full, and you're asking people to stay at home at the present moment. So we have serious problems. Um, the Cuban government, they have sent a, a, a delegation of nurses and doctors to Barbados, and they're really helping us a lot. They're helping the world. <laughs> yeah, no, they right agree with you, they're helping the world. Because without those Cuban doctors, I don't know how we would have been able to handle this situation. 
Um, but there's serious problems in Barbados because Barbados is also a, a country with tourism as its mm -hmm. main industry. So rather than be concentrating on dealing with this issue internally in a big way, we have opened up the country to tourists from all over the place. And because of that, our numbers continue to go up rather than to come down. So that um, I don't know what's going to happen in January. We are hoping that we will be able to reopen the schools in January. But if the numbers keep going up or remain at this level every day, I think we are going to have serious problems in terms of opening up the schools, you know, for during the month of January next year. So COVID, COVID is a very serious, is a very serious problem for Barbadian people and for Caribbean people. But before you go on to an other area, I would like to use this opportunity before I forget, congratulate the new government of, of Honduras, to congratulate the Sandinistas in Nicaragua, to congratulate the government of Bolivia, and you know, also the government of Venezuela. We would like to congratulate them for you know winning 90% of the votes in the Venezuelan elections. It's really thank you for that. It's been quite um, it's been quite a year in the Americas and yeah. um, regarding elections and, and, and the and the results of the progressive governments and movements throughout the hemisphere and particularly this month we've had and we've talked about this on this program we've had elections in in Nicar presidential elections in Nicar Nicaragua we had legislative elections in Argentina we had presidential elections in our first round in Chile legislative yeah. or regional elections in Venezuela and now presidential uh, this past Sunday in Honduras, and now um, and now the creation of the Republic of Barbados. Can we? Can you tell our audience a little bit about the technical creation of the republic? When this whole uh, project started, or the idea of you know leaving the monarchy, fully leaving the monarchy, and becoming a republic? What was what was the path of the project? Okay. In the 1990s, we had a constitutional commission, which was called, referred to as the Force Commission. And that commission led the process for Barbados to become a republic in the 1990s. They also recommended a number of constitutional changes. The people of Barbados voted in 1999 for a republic. But I think the government was afraid to take the big step and, and create the conditions for Barbados to become a republic in the 1990s. Then we went through the period of 2000 and some prime ministers made statements about advancing the cause for Barbados to become a republic. In June 2020, we in Barbados joined with the world to protest against the killing of George Floyd. And the Black Lives Matter movement took off in Barbados. So on the 6th, no, on the 6th of June, we held our first demonstration outside of the US Embassy. And the people called for the removal of Lord Nelson from our national hero's grave. Lord Nelson was a, 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 a very strong supporter of slavery. And he also fought a battle against the 
labor force in terms of emancipation. So he was standing in our national heroes parade. So the people called for the removal of Lord Nelson. The people also organized a march on the 13th of June. And there's a video that I will send a copy to you. There's a video on this. Right. And on the 13th of June, we made the call for the removal of Lord Nelson for the name of the Royal Barbados Police Force to be changed to the Barbados Police Force and for Barbados to become a republic. By the 16th of November, 2020, the government of Barbados removed Lord Nelson from our national heroes grade. So that was our first achievement. The 26th of July this year, the government issued a statement that Barbados will become a republic on the 30th of November. And then during that period, the government of Barbados made the statement that the Royal Barbados Police Force name will be changed to the Barbados Police Force. So it's a long, it's a long drawn out process, but I think the Black Lives Matter movement in Barbados helped to push the struggle for Barbados becoming a republic, for Lord Nelson being removed from our national hero's grave, and for us to change the name of the Royal Barbados Police Force. Okay, so I think that, that, that Black Lives Matter movement struggle was very, very important wow. yeah. to Barbadian people. And it helped to create the conditions. And it gave, it gave the prime minister and her government the willpower to make that first step in terms of building our republic, because I see it as the first step. We still have some other steps that we have to look at. But the first step was to work on the ceremonial changes in terms of removing the queen of head of state of Barbados and putting a woman as the head of state of Barbados. Our second step must be to build a People's Democratic Republic, a, a republic that will have serious constitutional changes that will benefit the people of Barbados, a republic that will institute the constituency assemblies that will create a higher level of people's participation in our decision making process, a republic that would allow the people of Barbados to vote for the president. Because our first step is a parliamentary republic where parliament vote and make a decision in terms of who must be the president of Barbados. So our movement, the Caribbean move of peace and integration say, we have to go to the second republic. And that would be to empower the people, to give the people the right to vote for our president, and also to create some economic changes in Barbados. For instance, we need to develop democratic changes with state corporations, private and public corporations. Every worker who worked for more than 10 years should benefit from some kind of shares within the corporation so that he or she can benefit from the surplus value that each organization is making in Barbados. And some of that finances should be contributed to the social development of Barbados, to education, culture, sports, okay? And, and, and to help the masses in terms of developmental programs that will benefit communities in Barbados. So wow. we still have a lot of work to do in terms of building our republic. But it's also positive and exciting. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah, really, yeah, it's, it's very oh, inspiring listening to you. <laughs> I'm very happy that the 
that the that this that this government was able to make the bold step forward because we have been waiting for this for a very long time since 1999 several decades yeah and but the, no the climate's different in the americas now right i mean the, the political and economic climate is really shifting very quickly yeah, throughout yeah, the yeah. americas and that yeah. that window is is there for for you and many other countries right now can you um can you tell us what the third step is well the, that's the second step that i mentioned the third step mm -hmm. which i think will be also part of our struggle in the future would be to build socialism to build a socialist state then you will have a socialist republic so you be the first republic is the parliamentary republic second republic you know the people's development or people's democratic republic and the final stage will be socialism and that's our struggle you know that's our struggle and we have to do it in stages and i know one day we will reach there and because what is happening in the in latin america and the caribbean region in terms of the socialist development as they place will have some level of influence on our people in barbados and the wider english-speaking caribbean area and i know that one day we will be able to build that kind of socialism that is important for the working class people in our region i'm so it's so inspiring to listen to listen to you today and to and to celebrate the formation of of, of the republic of barbados it's just really um it's one more example of possibility yeah. of what of what we as people can make happen and um i'm so thankful you had time for us today and um we just want to send our congratulations to you and all of your countrymen and we we just look to you now as 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 leaders and and, and such a wonderful example for the rest of us where um can you um tell our audience where um they can follow you on social media or if, yeah, so that I we have, can watch as this project continues to, to develop they can follow me on on my facebook page um i will normally put up a lot of information there um they can follow me on on twitter i am also david denny you know um they can follow me on instagram and oh, and you know i'm always there you know and they can also send me emails for information at david dot denny six six at hotmail.com and all locates david dot denny six six at hotmail.com okay. if you send me information there or ask me questions or you know um contribute to what we are building in our region because the caribbean movement for peace and integration we have a lot of relationship with other organizations in the region um that are anti-imperialist we also have a, a very strong relationship with a regional solidarity group that shows solidarity with cuba and with venezuela you know and and we are working together you know and we are would be happy to even work together with progressive forces in honduras and nicaragua because we have done it already with the sandinistas you know in bolivia you know and throughout the whole of latin america you know and we looking forward for a victory in brazil with lula you know in the future so i think good things are on the horizon for us and we need to work together to build that strong anti-imperialist movement throughout latin america and the caribbean and i know we will defeat the yeah. imperialist forces it's coming <laughs> it's coming because of people like you david so so thank you so much for your time today um, thank you for, for giving oh, no. thank you for thank our you. audience <laughs> You've got more you, celebrating ahead. <laughs> I'm glad you, you can have... call on me. You can call on me anytime. 
<laughs> we will. Okay. We will because we're going to want you to come back and keep us updated. Right, right, um, right. Okay. So we are building our republic. So can, can, and yeah. I'm very happy, you know? Yes, for sure. And we're I'm happy for today. You know, today's today is our Independence Day, and we are celebrating Your full Independence Day. Full Independence. Yeah. You know, full Independence. We're no longer, you know, uh, obligated to the Queen. You know, we are no longer uh, run by the Queen, because a lot of people don't understand it. Barbados, with the Queen of Head of State, when our Parliament passed resolutions. Okay, those resolutions had to be supported by the Queen or not, they cannot happen. Now we have a Barbadian who yeah. is our head of state, and that means a lot to the people oh, of Barbados. You know, it's our loyalty is no longer to the Queen, our loyalty is to the people of Barbados. Oh. You know? And long live the, 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 the Republic movement in Barbados. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. We'll we'll like thank you for taking a break in your celebrations today to talk no, with no, us. This is, great. <laughs> this is part this is part of the celebration. Yeah. Because I know that many people in Latin America will be able to, you know, to see your program and to hear your program. And I hope you will send me a link, a copy of the link. No, we definitely so will because page and share it with other friends in Barbados. We most certainly will. And um, and for our audience, I just want to let all of you know that I will put in the comment section um, all of David's contact information, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and his email so that um, all of you can follow him and his work and, and the evolution um, of the Republic of Barbados. Um, also, I should remind all of you watching and listening that um, you've been listening to Code What the F is Going On in Latin America and the Caribbean, Code Pink's weekly YouTube program of hot news out of the region. We broadcast every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern on Code Pink YouTube Live. And also uh, be sure to catch Code Pink Radio every Thursday morning, 11 a.m. Eastern, simulcasting on WBAI out of New York City and WPFW out of Washington, D.C both what the f is going on in latin america and the caribbean and code pink radio both can be found on apple Podcasts, and spotify so we've got a nice reach um at this point so thank you david i look forward to yes you want to you can you also add it. you can also add my telephone number okay. oh okay you sure you will <laughs> and no okay. problem no problem and okay the telephone number is WhatsApp, whatsapp everything you know okay and I'll be sure to add that as well. All right. Okay. Thank you so much.